Hello everyone and welcome to another video about working with the Web Audio API. This one is specifically on how to implement the Car Plus Strong algorithm in the Web Audio API. It's the third of uh, three videos on using the delay node. So a little bit of a recap here. The delay node, it's uh, one of the built-in audio nodes for the Web Audio API. Its use is very simple. It just passes an input audio stream to the output of the node after some specified delay time. But although it's simple, its uses are very powerful. In previous videos, we've talked about its use to create a comb filter or to implement feedback delay or for uh, creating a vibrato audio effect. And today we'll talk about Car Plus Strong algorithm. So first a little bit of uh, background there on this technique. It's an early form of physical modeling synthesis discovered somewhat uh, serendipitously, but it does model the physics of what happens when someone plucks a string like on a guitar. And the um, the people involved in its creation and the discovery of the technique have uh, talked about it. So Kevin Carplus had this to say, he was performing and the violist was Alex Strong, kind of a technical computer science-y kind of guy. I, this is uh, David Jaffe, said something about how I was trying to synthesize guitars and he said, oh, you know, we just discovered this really great way of synthesizing guitars and I'd love to show it to you. So although it's named Car Plus Strong, there were actually four people involved in the creation of the technique, Kevin Car Plus, Alex Strong, David Jaffe, and Julius Smith. And they published two papers of, about it. Their roles were essentially that uh, Alex Strong invented the algorithm, Kevin Car Plus did the first analysis of it, Jeffy tried to extend it, make it more musical, and Julia Smith showed how it actually modeled the physics of a vibrating string. So what is it? It's actually very much like the feedback delay that we have already talked about. In fact, really, it's just a variation on standard feedback delay. So as it was initially described, there's an excitation waveform typically in the form of a burst of noise, and that waveform is the same length as a delay in a feedback loop. The um, delayed signal, rather than being passed just through a gain, is passed through a low-pass filter, which models the attenuation as a wave vibrates, hits the end, and bounces back. And the excitation, the noise burst, is simultaneously fed to the destination, so to the output, and to the feedback loop. And it goes around the feedback loop, as shown. Uh, a few other points. The um, gain on the filter has to be less than, or strictly less than one, at all frequencies, or else the, there's the possibility of it going unstable. So one would need to be very careful if implementing this with, say, the Web Audio API's default low-pass bi-quad filter, because that's a resonant filter, and with sufficiently high values of Q, I think including the default value, it uh, does have a gain greater than one uh, just before it starts filtering out the frequencies. So one needs to be careful. And this technique was quickly extended, for instance, to model the physics of a wave propagating in one direction and in the other direction, or experimenting with different filters and uh, different uh, forms of excitation. But we've already worked with feedback delay, so what's going to make this actually work as a model, sound like a string? So, um, the important thing is not the length of the noise that's put in in the beginning, but the length of the delay right here. In the original implementation, they were the same length, but they don't have to be. If the number of samples of delay is L, then that's the same as having a delay time in seconds of L over the sampling frequency. 
sampling frequency here written as f sub s. So this delay time is the period. It's the time um, from when a noise enters the loop to when it repeats in the loop. Obviously, it uh, gets filtered or uh, attenuated, but still, there's a time to pass through that loop, and that's the delay. So if you ignore the filtering aspect, there's a periodicity there determined by the uh, delay. And quite simply, one over that delay time is the fundamental frequency. Now, if the delay time is sufficiently large, uh, 100 milliseconds or more, you'll hear an echo, like <laughs> But if it's very small, all of those repetitions get fused together into a periodic waveform. So for instance, if the delay is 10 milliseconds, then one over that delay gives you a frequency of 100 hertz. And that's still a fairly low frequency, but if it's around 2 milliseconds, then you get 500 hertz. And all of these values, um, 1, 2, 5, 10 uh, milliseconds, they're all in the audible range. So in the previous slide, we showed um, the general architecture that was first described, but there's lots of variations on it. And a simple variation is to have the, um, in the feedback loop, rather than a low pass filter, just for simplicity's sake, put a, just a gain there. So make it virtually the same form as our uh, feedback delay that we talked about in a previous lecture. The noise here need not be the same length of samples as the delay. And so we can set it to any small value and we can um, have continuously generated noise and then apply a gain that attenuates that noise over a short amount of time. The combination of that attenuation and the feedback gain gives us quite similar behavior to um, a simple low pass filter anyway. So that's a simple implementation. Let's have a look at the code that. So um, I'll do it like this. Right here, I'm just looking at the HTML and we're going to make user controls for the decay. So how quickly um, the excitation decays, essentially um, how much feedback is being applied. And we'll give it both a um, range control and an ID here. And then we have a delay. So how much delay, which determines, as we just mentioned, the frequency of the um, the note, the fundamental frequency uh, that you're going to hear. And then we have the width for how long is the noise burst. This has an effect, but not as big an effect on what you hear as the decay and the delay. And we'll also put in a button for um, uh, creating that, no for starting that noise burst. So essentially turning on again up to one and letting it decay down to zero, then turning it back on to one later. Now, let's look at the, um, the JavaScript code. So, we create a context. We are going to create a noise source. We could do it with an audio worklet. Here, we've done it um, just by filling a buffer with noise and allowing that buffer to uh, loop, so it's continually generating um, a loop of noise, actually about one second of noise. We have a noise gain, as we saw in the audio graph uh, shown on the slide. We have a delay node, calling it delay, and the feedback gain, another gain node. So we connect the noise to the noise gain, 
the noise gain to the destination. That's this direct path of the sound. We also have the noise going into the feedback loop, so into delay. Delay goes into feedback. Feedback goes back into the delay. That's the feedback right there. And the output of this also goes to the destination. When the decay changes, we update the feedback gain. We update uh, it on the web page on the HTML right there. We do the same thing for the delay. Note that the user changes the delay in milliseconds. So we update the delay time, which is given in seconds, by multiplying the value on the interface by 0 0.001, converting a value in milliseconds to a value in seconds. If the width gets changed, then we change the label. We don't need to change anything here because it's changed later on. When someone clicks play, we resume the context if it's been paused. We find the current time and we set the value of the gain up to 0.5 here. We could have set it to one. Um, and we ramp it down over the time based on the width that we gave previously. Here, width divided by 1000, because again, it um, is on the interface in terms of seconds, uh, sorry, in terms of milliseconds, and here we want it in terms of seconds. Let's see what this code does. So you heard a little click sound there. Let's give that, um, a higher value for decay, so it's going to take much longer before it fades away to silence. And you should have heard something that sounds a bit like a guitar string. Let's try a higher value of the delay, so that means that the frequency should be lower. That no longer sounds like a note. We're trying to generate too low of a frequency. But let's try it again. We get a little bit of a pause there because it actually took some time between the direct path uh, through to the destination and the first pass of the feedback loop. Lowering the delay. And it sounds like a note again. And we can play around with the width. There's a small effect here. So very narrow, very short signal being passed in. And a very long one. And you hear just a, a bit fuller sound, a bit more sustained with an increase in the width. So that's the idea of the car plus strong algorithm. It can easily be extended by putting in that low pass filter, as was mentioned, or by having different excitation waveforms. It doesn't have to be noise. You could have used an oscillator. It just needs to be a short period waveform. However, there is a problem. So let's return to the slides. The delay node has a minimum delay when it's used in a feedback loop. It's just the way it was created. One block delay minimum if it's put into a feedback loop. And it doesn't matter if in the feedback loop there's other things going on like a gain or a filter or other things. If output feeds back into input, then it will take at least one block of samples before the delay node is generating at anything. One block of samples in the Web Audio API is um, always 128 samples. Although the people behind development of the API have talked about making it uh, something that could be set by the user, but at the moment it's always 128 samples. How long is that in terms of time? Well, um, if you know the sample rate, Typical values are 48 kilohertz or 44.1 kilohertz, then that 128 samples 
uh, is the delay time of 128 divided by the sampling rate. So, for instance, if you, one uses uh, 44.1 kilohertz, then that is close to two and a half milliseconds of delay. Well, that also translates into a frequency value. And what that means is that you can't produce high frequencies because you can't make the delay small enough with the delay in a feedback loop. In fact, if you sample at 44.1 kilohertz, the highest frequency that you can generate with the Carl plus strong algorithm as implemented is 344 hertz, which means that you can generate a lot of useful sounds, but you can't say generate the full range of notes on uh, most guitars or a piano. How do you get around that? You don't really get around it with the delay node. You have to implement your own node, and you can use an audio worklet for doing that. And in the GitHub repository associated with uh, this video and in the book associated with the video, we give code and explanation of how to implement Carl Plus Strong in an audio worklet. And uh, if time allows, I might have an additional video at some point on how to do that. So that concludes this video. Once again, uh, thanks for listening and watching. And if you have questions, please get in touch. That's bye for now.